All right. Welcome to Mason Noise Math Lab. Thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing. I have a very exciting video for you today. Uh, take a look at the statement as usual. Read it five to a hundred times. This is what we have. Okay, we have x is a stock price at time t. Um, we want to suppose that ln of x is distributed normally. In other words, x is a log normal random variable. The mean is mu, the variance is v squared, and this is where mu is given by all of this business here. Okay, um, I should point something out. I'm kind of mixing notation. This is the stock price at now, right? This is the stock price today. So I'm only using X here. This is really what you're used to seeing here. This is the stock price at time T. So this is S sub T or S of T, okay? Stock price at time T, I'm letting it be X just for convenience, notation wise. And then this is the usual stock price at time zero. So the mean of my log normal random variable is given by this, all this business here. And the variance is given by sigma squared T. Now. What I want to prove is I want to prove the formula for the value of a call option. I want to find the call premium. And this is known as the Black-Scholes formula. Um, I want to prove it a very, I think, straightforward way. It does involve a bunch of calculus and some algebra, of course, and a little bit of probability. But I think it's relatively straightforward to follow, especially in comparison to other, well, justifications I've seen. Now, one thing I want to point out is that I'm not, there's a bunch that I'm not doing. I'm gonna do a lot, but there's a bunch I'm not doing. What am I not doing? I'm not showing why we should pick the mean to be the natural log of the current of the stock price at time zero's value, plus the risk-free interest rate minus the dividend minus a half the volatility squared times t. I'm not showing why that's true, and I'm not showing why the variance is equal to sigma squared t. Sigma is the volatility, as I mentioned, okay? But I'm gonna show why this is true. If we assume this, that's why I've written it this way. If I make these assumptions, then I can show that this is the price of a call. So let's go right into it. Man, there's so much to do. You better either be patient or you better just fast forward. So it's up to you how much you wanna see, but I'm gonna go through the details, okay? Let me first start out with what it is we're pretty much trying to show. Let me show you what I mean. So. What should be the price of an option that has payoff the maximum of zero and the difference between the stock price at expiration and the strike K? Okay, what should we pay for that? So let me back up a second, right? Let me just remind you of something. What's the payoff of a call? The payoff of a call is the following, right? It's equal to the maximum of zero, the price at expiration minus the strike. Remember, I've been using X here. I've been using X. Let me just, let me just place this with X. And you should just be thinking throughout our discussion here that X is the stock price uh, at expiration. It's the stock price at time T. Okay, this is the payoff of a call. Another way I can write this, by the way, I can write this another way. I can write this as a piecewise defined function. This is equal to x minus k or zero. When is it equal to x minus k? When is it equal to the stock price at expiration? Okay, that's what I'm really calling this. Minus the strike. Well, that's if, that's if the stock price at expiration exceeds the strike and it's zero otherwise. In other words, it's zero if the stock price at expiration is less than K. What should be, as I mentioned, what should be the fair price of this? The fair price of this call option should be the expected payoff, whatever we're expected to get at time T, and then discounted that back to the present time. We're gonna pay some money now to purchase a call, and what should its value be? It should be whatever the expected payoff is, whatever it's gonna pay off, discounted time zero. The concept is not that 
tricky, I don't think. I mean, I think that makes sense. So again, let me write what I just said. The expected payoff of a call is going to be, okay, it's equal to the expected, let me write it this way, let me think, let me say something real quick. The payoff itself is a random variable. Think back to your exam P days probability. The payoff itself is a random variable. So what, what I'm gonna use here is the law of total probability for um, the payoff, for expectation. So this is equal to the expected value of x minus k given, given what? Given x is greater than k times the probability x is greater than k. I'm using, again, I'm using the little total, law of total probability. This right-hand side should look familiar. I need to add something else. Remember, I just need to break this up. What I mean is, what else could it be? Or it's the expected value of zero given um, x is less than k times the probability x less than k. So hopefully you see what I'm using here, right? This is just this is just law of total probability for expectation. This is from I mean, payoffs a random variable. This is the law of total probability ability for expectation. Okay, now clearly this is zero. What's the effective value of zero given the stock price is less, at time t is less than k? It doesn't matter. It's, this is going to be zero. This whole thing is going to be zero. So this is drops out. Okay, so now this is equal to, this is equal to, now what else can I do here? The expected value of x minus a constant, okay? You can actually do some algebra on this. I claim this is the following. This is equal to the expected value of x given x is greater than k. So again, the expected value of the stock price at time t given the stock price at time t is greater than k times, or sorry, minus k times, times, the probability x is greater than k. So what did I do here? It, it may look kind of fishy at first, but I really haven't done that much. All I've done is kind of factor this minus k out. The k comes out. Just property of expectation, no big deal. Um, so now what? This is pretty much, this is pretty much what I want to prove. This is pretty much what I want to prove. Um, I'm going to find expressions for these two things and then we'll be done. We'll basically be done. So. Let's just keep in mind, well actually let me write down one other thing. This is just the payoff, okay, this is the payoff at time t. This is at time t. What would be the price today? What would the actual price today be? The price of this call with stock price um, s uh, strike k time t is equal to the expected payoff at time t discounted back to time zero. How do I discount something back to time zero? Take e to the negative rt times the expected payoff. That's exactly what I just said, right? Find the payoff, find the expected payoff at time t, discount it back to time zero, that's gonna be the price. And it makes sense. I think that makes perfect sense. So um, let me just write it one other way. So this is equal to e to the negative rt times, okay? times, this is write this thing real quick, right? Well, so we're gonna keep this in mind here because this is what I'm gonna need. So this is gonna be times, um, let's write it this way. This is the expected value of x given x greater than k times the probability x greater than k. And then minus e to the negative rt probability x greater than k. I'm going to need to come back to this, but this is this is pretty much uh, it. There's a k in here though, don't forget that k, dang it. There's a k right here. There we go. This is what I'm going to need to prove. All right, one step at a time. So first thing I want to tackle, 
actually, is um, first thing I'll tackle, I think, is this. This is the hard thing. This is really the important piece right here, which took me a while to figure out. It's really not that bad, but it's kind of a lot of work. So that's what we're gonna get at first. So I want to find out what is that is equal to. So let's do that. Okay, so we're interested in the conditional expectation. One thing that's cool about this is this will take you back to your exam P days. So again, let me just remind you, I'm not actually, I need to do an intermediate step actually before I do this. The expected value of X given, so the expected value of the stock price given the stock price is greater than K. I want to know what this is equal to. There's something I need to figure out first though. And it may not be obvious yet, but what I need to figure out actually is I need to figure out what is the PDF of X, the probability density function of X. Okay, the probability density function of the stock price. So the PDF of X, this again should take you back to your exam P days when you're doing probability, right? What set of questions is it do to find the PDF of all, right? What is it? It's the derivative with respect to X of the probability Sorry, of the cumulative distribution function. That's what it is. By definition, the PDF is the derivative of the CDF. This is the CDF. Probability capital X is less than little x. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to use x instead of s sub t. But let me remind you again, remind you again, that the, the random variable x is the stock price of expiration. Okay? It's important to realize that when you see how I go through all this, okay? So now this is equal to the derivative with respect to x of the probability that the natural log of my random variable x is less than or equal to the natural log of little x. And hopefully you see where I'm going with this. And remember, capital X, the stock price times t, is log normally distributed. So why don't we transform it into a standard normal variable, right? I mean, if ln of x, if x is a log normally distributed random variable, then ln of x is a standard normal random variable. Well, it's a normal variable with mean mu and uh, variance uh, v squared, which is how I defined it, right? So this is equal to the following. This is equal to the derivative with respect to x. Again, let's just transform this into a normal variable. How do I transform this into a normal variable? This is the probability z. How do I transform a normal variable into a standard normal variable. I subtract the mean, okay, so that's ln x minus mu, that's what I called the mean, divided by the standard deviation. Well, the variance was v, so the standard deviation, um, sorry, the, the variance was v squared, so the standard, standard deviation is v. So this is what I have. Now let's take the derivative, and let's keep something in mind. Let's keep something in mind. Um, this is equal to what? I'm gonna use a notation that's given um, in this study material although it's not, um, I don't think, uh, conventional, but we're going to let um, n of x be the standard uh, normal, well, stand, standard cumulative normal distribution. This is a standard cumulative normal. That being said, that's what this is. This is the standard cumulative normal evaluated at this weird thing. If I take the derivative of that, it's the derivative of the standard, uh, the cumulative standard normal uh, variable evaluated at ln x minus mu over v times the derivative of the inside. What's the derivative of that? It's, well, derivative of ln of x is one over x. So this is one over x v. We have it. I mean, you should know by heart what is the derivative. In other words, what's the PDF? This is the PDF of the standard normal variable. That's what this is. Evaluated at ln x minus mu over v. So this is equal to, let's just write that out. This is equal to um, 1 over x times 1 over v. Remember, standard normal variable has this 1 over 2 pi thing. I have the v here as well. 
times e to the negative one half um, z squared, but we're evaluating it here. So this is one half ln x minus mu all over v quantity squared. Boy, I got it on one board. This is the PDF. This is the PDF. Okay, let me just emphasize that because I'm going to use this. This is the PDF probability density function of uh, x. Remember, where x is log normal distributed. Keep that in mind because this is what we need to do. We need to figure out this, right? This is what we're after. This is what we're after. Oh man, oh man. It's going to get crazy. So, take a trip down memory lane. Ask yourself, how the heck do I find a conditional expectation? Go back to just foundations. What is the foundational way, the foundational method of finding a conditional expectation? Just behave like a robot, literally. This is what you do, you just follow the rules. The rules say, this is by definition, x is a continuous random variable, okay? If I want the conditional expectation of x, given that x is greater than or equal to k, well, I need to integrate all, over all the x's that I need to integrate over. It's an expectation, so I need an x in there. This is part of the integrand, right, because it's expectation, times the conditional PDF. The conditional PDF conditioned that x is greater than k, dx. This is just definition. I've done nothing. This is by definition. Let me just write that in case you forgot. By definition. I don't even, that's not even spelled right, but I don't care. You know what I mean, by definition. So this is equal to, again, by definition, what is probability x given x is greater than k? Okay, so, well, let's see. This is the integral. We're conditioning that x is greater than k. So we're integrating, whatever we're integrating over must be greater than k. k to infinity. Maybe it's not infinity, we'll figure it out. But actually it is, it is infinity, right? Let's think about it for a second. Probability x given probability x given x greater than k. Okay, x has to be greater than k, so I'm integrating k to whatever. Why do I con